We're gonna make something really fun today. This is called the Allegro Crossbody Bag. Hi there, I'm Lara, one of the owners and designers here at Rivet Patterns, and today I'm gonna to walk you through, step by step, how to make my new Allegro Crossbody Bag Pattern. This pattern is awesome. I love it so much. It's become one of my absolute favorites. I've made this particular bag using fabric from Surge Fabric Shop. This is a twill tweed. Um, and the orange uh, is a, a Brussels linen, I think is what it's called, or I'll link um, to Surge Fabric in the description box below. Um, you will not regret making this. If you're afraid of binding, don't be. I'll walk you through it, and you know what? The more you do it, the better, better you'll get, and you may never be perfect. I'm not, for sure, um, but that's okay. Doing binding is super fun. Um, inside, I'm gonna try to push it out here, we have a zipper pocket. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started. We are ready to move to the very first steps of our tutorial. And so I wanna walk you through um, the pattern pieces that I have. The great thing about Allegro is that it just, it's not a ton of pieces. Um, so that makes it a fun, kind of a quicker make. But first I have my um, pockets. I'm doing two pockets, one on each side of the main panel. So I've got two outers and two linings for both panels. I have two outers and two lining for the, the main panels. I also have my um, zipper pocket. I've got my uh, half inch du double fold bias tape. I've got my hidden strap connectors. I've got my uh, filter clips and D-rings and my adjustable buckle, my two, two zippers, my strap connectors, and my shoulder strap. All right, that's everything. I've got some matching thread. So I'm gonna get my um, machine threaded and we are ready to get started. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so the first thing, let's move our panels and whatnot out of the way. Um, and the first thing we're going to talk about are the straps. I'm not going to show you, these are my hidden straps. Okay. Our strap connectors. Um, and this is, I'm going to use this black for my, um, shoulder strap. Um, so you can make your own like I did with the connectors, or you can use webbing like I'm doing for the shoulder strap. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. I will link to a blog post that shows you how to make all kinds of sizes of um, straps, strap connectors, handles, and all that so that you can reference that if you need to. So let's start by turning to page 13 in our um, in our tutorial. This starts with, at the bottom, it's the darts. So um, we're looking at step one of the darts. So we're gonna take each piece, the, the pocket pieces and the main panel pieces, and we are going to sew these darts. So let's start here. Okay, we're gonna take one triangular piece here and we're going to put them right sides together and give it a little flip. We're gonna do this with every single dart. All right, now that we have every single piece pinned and ready to go, we're gonna head over to our sewing machine and we're going to stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance across back stitching at the beginning of the, and the end um, across this these darts, every single one. Let's do it. All right, so let's grab our slip pocket pieces. So we'll put our main panels to the side. Oops. Okay, so let's throw those to the side. 
Now we've got our, if we push those darts out, it kind of gives a little bit of a bubble effect, which is exactly what we're going for. Now we want to put these wrong sides together. So we're going to take one, one outer and one lining and place it wrong sides together, matching up those raw edges, and just put a few clips here and there to keep you lining up those darts um, on the outer and the lining. Oh, and we'll click here as well. All right, let's do the other one. Now, you don't have to put slip pockets on yours at all. You could put it on the inside, not on the outside. You could do one if you want to do just one, or you can use two. It's totally up to you how you want to do this. But now we're going to head to our sewing machine and we're going to base using a quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to baste around these raw edges. Let's do it. Okay, so let's grab a pair of scissors. If anything is uh, just a little extra, we're gonna just trim, make sure all of our um, edges are even. Okay, let's start with just one of these. We're going to grab our binding. If you uh, need to make your own binding, I will link um, a blog post for that as well. Uh, or I should say double fold bias tape. We're gonna bind the edge is what we call it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my bias tape, okay? So it's folded in half and then each of the outer edges are folded in and pressed and then you're, you're encasing all the raw edges, right? So I wanna unfold it. Okay. And now I'm going to line up this long raw edge with this long raw edge and I'm going to clip or pin in place. I like to overlap it just a little bit off the edge, just in case when I'm sewing things get a little weird and I need that extra. We're gonna do this with both pieces or with both um, slip pockets, I should say. Okay, now cut that off. Let's do the other slip pocket. All right, we're gonna open up our our bias tape and we're going to line it up the long raw edge with this long raw edge you got my you got and you can buy double fold bias tape this is half inch double fold bias tape you can buy it at any fabric store or you could just make your own it's not hard all you need is um quilting cotton 100 percent cotton woven and you're good to go all right now what we're going to do is we're gonna head over to our sewing machine and using a half inch seam allowance, we're gonna stitch along that raw edge. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that over or we're gonna push the, the binding up away from the raw edge and turn it over to the lining, okay? Now, we're just going to fold it in on itself where those creases are, okay? So you can see those creases, they're really easy. That's the whole point of having those creases there. So you have the first fold, and then the second fold will fold it all the way over and encase those raw edges and also encase that stitch line so you don't even see that. So we will do this on both pocket pieces and it looks so clean and beautiful. Don't be afraid of binding. Just takes a little bit of practice and this part's easy. All right, so that's the lining side. This is what the um, outer will look like. So we're gonna go to our sewing machine and start and, um, stitching on the outer. So this side up, we're gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge here. That's, we wanna make sure that we get all of the, um, both sides of the binding um, in the stitch line. All right, let's do it.
Okay, let's go ahead and trim our excess off here. Let's look how beautiful that looks. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now let's move to the next page. All right, now what we want to do is we want to prep our outer panels. So grab your main outer panels and we want to prep those. Okay. So we're going to take our, our exterior slip pocket and we're going to place it on top of our out, main outer panels. You want the angle to angles to be going the same direction, right? So this is angled up. This one's angled up. This one's angled up. This one's angled up. All right. So we're going to line um, up the at the going to line them up at the um, darts. So just line them up there and give them a clip. All right. That just gives us a good baseline to get moving. All right. Just a few clips here and there. And then we're going to base these together. Okay. Just don't be afraid of your fabric. Just uh, move it around however you need to. Okay. So there's one. Let's do the other. So we're, what we're doing is we're going to baste around this raw edge here using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, look at these beautiful panels. Now, what we have is we have a big pocket on each. That's too big of a pocket. So what we want to do is you could take a pin and you could pin here. Just want to pin them together a little bit. There we go. And you're going to want to, um, you're going to want to, to stitch down the center. You could, you can do two stitches. So you have four pockets. Uh, this is not a huge bag. So, uh, I will say that the ones I've made in the past, I do a stitch down the center and my cell phone, my glasses fit in just fine. So the more pockets you put in, the less space you have to put your things, right? So we're going to, the way you can do this, if you like, is you can fold these and match the darts. Okay, and then you can mark the center um, like this. Okay, so you've got two pins that mark the center, or you can draw a line, and then you want to stitch down that center line. All right, let's do it. You want to make sure that you are top stitching at the beginning uh, quite a bit here. You want to anchor that really nicely so that it doesn't come undone with use. All right, here we are with our two beautiful panels. I love this fabric so much. It is so beautiful. Okay, so you might have some um, threads hanging. Get those trimmed off. All right, let's move on to the next step. We're on page 17. Step three, we are going to work on our um, hidden strap connector. This is super fun. Um, it makes me really happy. All right, so we've got two hidden strap connector pieces. Well, actually, I have three on accident. Okay, two hidden strap connector pieces. These are not cut perfectly. No big deal. They will be hidden. They just need to be kind of right. So we're going to grab a writing utensil, and we're going to grab our hidden connector overlay pattern piece. Now, this is not in the cut chart. The reason it's not in the cut chart is it needs to have a perfect one inch rectangle here. And so I did not put it in this cut chart and requested that you print it or use the projector file. All right. So we're going to place our hidden connector over. Actually, I would not use the projector for this. I would actually print it just to make sure that the, that you're really getting a good rectangle here. That's just me personally. Um, and we're going to trace that rectangle. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Okay, let's trace it on the other. Okay, we've got our pattern piece marked. 
we have a tall marking and we have a short marking. All right, so each panel should have one marking. So if this panel has the tall marking, the other panel has the short marking, all right? Because it's supposed to be a crossbody. So this one will hit right about here. Just remember, you've got binding across the top and you've got um, your half inch seam allowance here. So you don't want your rectangle to go too far up and too far over. That's why that rectangle on the pattern piece exists so that you know where to put your, your overlay. Okay, so this is the tall one. So that means my other panel is gonna be the short one. So there's one panel, let's grab the other panel and we're gonna go on the short side. Okay. Very good. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to my sewing machine and just like for a zipper pocket, I'm going to stitch around this drawn um, rectangle. Let's do it. Here we have it. Now we're gonna grab a, um, a little pair of scissors and I'm gonna grab my seam ripper and I'm gonna show you what I do. You have to be very, very careful. I'm gonna start by poking a hole all the way through all the layers at the very, very end here and I'm gonna push it through the center a little bit, okay? Just like that. Then I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm going to go the rest of the way, okay? Then I'm going to go diagonal into the corners. Like I said, this is exactly like when we do um, zipper pockets. Okay, now we're going to go diagonal into the other corner. There we go. It's a little thick. You can use an X-Acto knife for this as well. Um, I just don't have one. All right, so there's our little, our little hole, and we're going to do that with the next one. So again, my um, C-Ripper at the base there and then I'm going to push it carefully and slowly because if you get out of control you're going to rip your whole your whole panel so just a little bit really it's just enough to get your your scissors through okay okay I'm going to prep by getting my pressing mat because that is coming okay pardon my dirty mat um now I've got mommy iron okay here we go now what we want to do is we're going to take one panel and just like um the zipper pockets you're going to push all that fabric through to the wrong side push it all through okay and so it kind of looks a little messy so turn it to the wrong side And you just kind of want to press it down. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to see this side. So you want the, the nice side to be the outer. So. Perfect. Now let's look at the front. Ooh, doesn't that look nice? Ooh, I love it. I get really excited about this hidden connector. It's so cute. All right, let's do the same thing with the other panel. Let's push that fabric right on through turn it to the wrong side and just kind of pull that out and straighten it and you're going to press it and it should be a nice perfect rectangle all right let's look at the front perfect i love it love it love it okay now let's move on to the next step I am now on page 18. Okay, grab one of your outer panels and we're gonna continue to work here. And now grab your strap connector. Now you will find that this strap connector is very long. You're not gonna need to use all of it. Um, I just like to have more to work with just so my hands have them something easy to grab, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna push this through to the back side, through the hole, okay? Just like this. Just like that. Now I can pin or clip it in place, but that's what it's gonna look like. Let's do that with the other. Mm. 
good plumbing. Okay. You just want it to be straight up and down. This is what the, the front looks like. If you turn it over, you have this here. Whoops. Okay, you have this flap of extra connector. You'll be able to turn that off later. But now, straighten that out. We want to go to our sewing machine and we want to stitch across the top edge of that opening that we made. So not the bottom edge, the top edge. We still have more to tuck in there. So the top edge. So if we look at it from the back, it's this top edge here, okay? All right, let's head to our sewing machine and let's do that. Now we've got it connected to this top area here. This is all going to be hidden. We're now gonna grab our D-ring and you're going to feed it through the D-ring just like this. That's what it's gonna look like. Feed this one through the D-ring just like this. Now you're gonna take this raw edge and you're gonna put it through the bottom hole because you still have, oopsies, you still have an opening in the bottom because you stitched the top. So you're gonna push that through and pull it down, okay? You don't need to see a lot of your strap connector. In fact, it's best that you don't. So pull that down. And so here's, we've got just a little peekaboo here of the, from the strap connector. So the next one, we're going to push that through to the other side. And I'll show you what the back side looks like in just a second. So just get in there and push it through. You can use tweezers if you need to and pull it tight. I like it to be tight. Um, you'll see um, some people who make this will make this a little bit longer. That's fine. That's up to your preference. But this is what the back side looks like. Okay? No one's going to see this. This, this will be um, covered with the lining and everything, but this is what it looks like. We're not going to touch those. You're going to leave them as they are. And then you're going to head to the sewing machine, and you're going to top stitch across this top edge on both of them, about an eighth of an inch, making sure to back stitch. Let's do it. Hey, here we are. These hidden strap connectors are just the cutest. Now I'm gonna flip this over and grab my scissors and I am gonna trim off some of this strap connector. You do not have to, it's not going to cause any problems. I just, um, I just need. Okay, so here we have our outers. So beautiful. I love the peekaboo here of that hidden strap connector. Okay, so now let's put that to the side. Now we're going to grab one of our outer or our, our lining pieces, our main panel lining pieces, and we're going to work on our zipper pocket. You have markings on this pattern piece for the zipper, the rectangle to match up, and you have the rectangle here on the actual um, lining, pocket lining. So you want to match those up. Okay, and these are right sides together. Grab a couple of pins so it's not going to go anywhere. And then just like we did with the hidden strap connector, this will be a lot easier because it's bigger. We're going to sew around our rectangle. Take our pins out, and just like the strap connector, hidden strap connector, we're going to cut down the center of this. So I, I fold it like this, and then I give it a little snip in the center, just like that, and then I open it up so I can now fit my, my scissors in there. And I'm going to go down and then diagonal into each corner without going through the stitch line, otherwise it's going to be ruined. But I'll have to redo it. Okay, let's grab our pressing mat and our iron. And just like the hidden connector, we're gonna push that through to the wrong side. It's just a whole lot easier since it's bigger. Okay, push the top piece through and everything. All of that needs to be pushed through to the wrong side. So it looks a little messy right now, but that's okay. So you're gonna pull those edges and you're gonna press. You want those corners to be nice and crisp. Yeah. 
And again, no one's going to see this side, but they will see the other side. So let's take a look at that and make sure we're in good shape and we really are. Okay. Let's put this away. All right, we have that. Now grab your zipper for your zipper pocket. I'm going to grab, where is it? I'm going to grab my wash away wonder tape, my quilters tape here, and I'm going to put uh, this uh, wash away tape on both long edges of the zipper. Now this next part, this little bit tidbit is not in the tutorial. It's just my little fun tidbit that I learned while making other bags, which is great. I'm sure somebody taught it to me. I just can't remember who it was. So sorry, can't credit them. Okay, so I'm going to just remove the paper for the tape on the bottom side. Okay, leave the paper for the top side. Okay, now we're gonna bring our opening over our zipper and we're just going to line up just past that tape, this bottom edge, okay? All right, so let's bring our zipper pull through, but now turn this over and remove the top tape. That just make, gives you the ability to get one side done and then the next side is cake, okay? Super easy. All right, now you can use pins for that. You totally can, I did for years. Wash away wonder tape is a wonder. Right, now we're going to go to our sewing machine and we're going to edge stitch, top stitch, all the way around our rectangle. All right, here we go. Look at there, it's super pretty. I love these colors. Okay, so there's our zipper. Looking good. Now, turn it to the wrong side. And we're going to fold our pocket lining right sides together. You can also trim your um your zipper if you need to. So just pull that apart and give it a little trim. But you don't have to. You'll be fine. So fold this. So you're going to match the short edge. And of course, then you're going to match the long edges. And then you're going to head over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew these three sides. One, two, three. Now, one of the things that you'll need to make sure you do, I should say before we go sew, is you, you can't, you are not going to sew through the lining. So when you start, you're going to lift this up and push this out of the way. So just this is under your presser foot. Then when you pivot and you're getting ready to do this, you're going to lift this up and push the top underneath so just the pocket lining is under your presser foot, okay? Then you're here, and then you're gonna stop, and you're gonna pivot, and what are you gonna do? You're gonna lift up the pocket lining and push the reg the main lining, or the, yeah, the main panel lining out of the way, and just stitch on the pocket. Let's do it. Done, there we are. Here's what the back side looks like. It's okay that it hangs over a little bit. It'll adjust as we as we put it together. Um, here's what the front side looks, looks like. You open this up, you've got a really nice pocket. All right, we have achieved our zipper pocket. Now let's move on. All right, now what we're gonna do, now that we've got our zipper pocket finish, we're gonna place our, our um, lining right side together. and just clip around the outside edge, matching up those darts. Okay, we'll set that to the side. Let's grab our outer panels. Let's do the same thing there, right sides together. And push those D-rings down, okay, out of the way. Match up those darts. And now we're gonna head over to our sewing machine And 
we are going to sew these together. Now, here's a little tip for you. Now, this is fusible fleece, and it's not very thick, but my outer fabric is thick, and I'm doing two outside pockets, so I've got four layers, or three layers here, plus two layers of the um, the fleece and the SF-101, so it is pretty thick. So if you're using thick fabric, or you're using vinyl for that matter, um, you're going, and, and you're going to, and you're using fleece or whatever, cut that fusible fleece a half inch smaller all the way around, give or take. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's going to take the bulk out of your seams and is going to give, make it a little bit easier for you to sew through. Because as you can see, this is pretty thick. If you don't have an industrial machine, that's going to be difficult to get through. So take your time, maybe do one pocket instead of two. You Only you know your machine. So maybe do one pocket instead of two, make that um, that fusible fleece a little bit smaller so that your machine doesn't have to work so hard. Now we're gonna go to our sewing machine using a half inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch all the way around that bottom and side raw edge. Okay, now let's grab our scissors and we're going to trim the seam allowance. You want to trim it to about a quarter of an inch, give or take. Be careful what you're trimming through. You don't want to cut through your pocket. Okay. Obviously, it's not perfect. I didn't do a perfect job, but it's okay. Not worried about it in the slightest. Okay. Now let's trim this. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's turn them right side out so that we can take a look at them and make sure everything looks the way we want it to. There she is. Gosh, I love this bag. Okay, there's that. Let's set that to the side and um, we have our lining. It does not need to be turned right side out. Okay. Yes, that third piece that I thought was a uh, was for my hidden hidden connector was actually my zipper tab. So now we're moving on to the zipper tab. Let's go ahead and get our pressing mat. Even our iron. All right. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to fold two opposite raw edges. Um, of the zipper tape to the wrong side a quarter of an inch. Okay, so first let's get all wrinkled out of it. Okay. So about a quarter of an inch this way. You'll want to measure if you don't have a hem gauge right here. This is a great buy. Get, make sure you get one. They're super cheap. And okay, we're going to do that with the other as well. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to fold it in half, right sides together. So your your fold is going to be on top, but so it's it's right sides together. So fold it this way, fold against fold, right? Then I'm going to clip it using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to stitch both short ends. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to trim our seam allowance. Let's move this out of the way. Good grief. We're going to trim our seam allowance down to about a quarter or an eighth of an inch. Okay. Now we need to turn this right side up. So just carefully turn one side right side out and the other side. I take something pokey. I'm going to use the ends of this. This, this pair of scissors being very careful not to cut open or anything. And I'm pushing those corners out because I want them to be nice 
pointy sharp corners. Okay, so here's what we've got. Trim any extra threads if you need to. Okay, now grab your um, main zipper. This is the top. So it's the, as you open it, that's going towards the bottom. Okay, so this is the bottom. If you need to trim your zipper a little bit, trim it. This is a 12 inch zipper, it's the perfect size. Okay, now you're gonna take the bottom of your zipper and you're going to place it inside that little opening. Should fit um, perfectly, regardless of the type, whether you're using a number three or a number five um, uh, zipper, it's gonna fit in. You're gonna have a little more overlap for a three, but, that you, but that's okay, no worries, it's not a big deal. Now I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch across or edge stitch across this fold. So now we need to grab a needle and some thread and we are going to hand stitch. If you don't mean at all, I hate hand stitching, but I will do it for this because this is necessary and it's very helpful. All right, so let's thread our needle. Okay, now there are photos of this in in the tutorial if you need extra help. It's not hard, just different. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to unzip the zipper, unzip, and we're gonna fold the ends of the zipper, the opposite of the zipper tab, uh, to the wrong side of the zipper and away from the zipper tape. So away from the zipper tape means just like this. So you're taking it, and you're folding it kind of, it's like, it makes a triangle here. It's hard for me to show you. Let me see if I can pin it and show you a little bit better. But if you look at, it's a, it's pretty clear in the um, tutorial. Let's see if I can get this. It can be finicky here. Maybe I'll do it like that. There we go, maybe. So you can see we've got a triangle here. So let's do the other side. Oop, except I did. Did it the, oh no, no, I did the right. So you want it to the wrong side. You want to fold it to the wrong side. It wants to keep flipping up because it's plastic and that's what it does. So the same with this. So you're going to fold it to the wrong side, make a bit of a triangle there. You can see the point. Pin it if you can, clip it, whatever you can do or don't and just hold on to it while you stitch. Okay, so now I'm just going, all I want to do is secure this. I don't, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. I'm just securing it. So if you need to make an adjustment, that's fine. Make an adjustment. Okay. So I'm just going to do just a couple little stitches here. Now that we have we've done our zipper tab and we have um, stitched our the ends of our zipper tape out of the way, we're ready to apply the zipper to the lining first. Okay, we're basting it to the lining. So it says start at the short side seam and match one zipper tape edge to the raw edge of the back opening back opening with the wrong side of the zipper facing the lining. Okay, so this where the the pull is, that's the right side of the zipper. The other side is the long side. So we want to start at about a half an inch from the side seam. So you can mark that if you want, or you can eyeball it. That's up to you. Um, so let's start with this, this side seam, or this um, side of the zipper tape. So I'm going to grab it here. I want to keep it folded and I'm going to open up. I can do this so you can see it. Open up my lining, this is the short end, and about a half an inch from that side seam, I'm going to start. Now, if you, you be as precise as you can be or want to be, because it will be wonky if you don't get it right. Okay, sorry, this is really difficult to see. Okay, so we're going to clip every now and then. Okay, as many clips as you, you think you need. Don't be ashamed to use a lot. So you're going to go all the way down 
the length of one side and you're going to stop three quarters of an inch ish from the other side seam or an inch it's up to you okay so it's three quarters to an inch and you're just going to clip that on now take the other side of your zipper tape and you're going to do the same thing to the opposite side here so it's to the other side of your lining so wrong side of the zipper tape to the right side of the lining starting about a half an inch from the side seam on the low end there we go let's try and fight with me and then going all the way over until about three quarters to an inch from the tall side seam just like this this is what it looks like okay okay we're going to use a zipper foot and we're going to just stitch from here to here and from here to here what is that So we've got it all based it on and we can even test it. Let's trim our, we can test it. It works great. Very nice. Okay. Now we are moving on to page 24. And what we want to do is we're going to take this end of the zipper and we want to tuck it in this opening. So just push it through there, just like this. You want to push it out of the way. So this is what it looks like. Okay, just pushed out of the way, just like that. Okay, you could even push it down and uh, and clip it if you want, it's up to you, but this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, now, um, we are going to take the lining wrong side out, okay, and the main outer right side out, and we're gonna place the lining inside the outer so we've got the zipper open or yeah the zipper is open we're getting all of our just shoving it in there okay matching up those side seams we give it in a clip we're going to clip all the way around so we're going to start by matching the side seams that's the best place to start i'm opening up those thick side seams as well um if you have super thick fabric you'll want to do that so let's pull it taut and that'll make it easy to clip Sweet. here's one side let's do the other side make sure it's pushed down in there and give it a nice tug pull it up making it nice and tight okay so here's that and so you can see here we've got our bag here now we'll we'll smooth it out as as when we get finished good grief i can't even talk so i'm going to go to my sewing machine i'm going to base these together just making sure that the this is pushed down just like this and you're just going to stitch across there not a big deal okay so let's base use a quarter inch seam allowance Okay, we are almost finished with our bag. Here we go. If you have anything wonky, like any any extras hanging off here, any like fabric that's not even, you could trim this up. If your um, seam allowance got a little out of hand, you can trim it up as well. Just want everything to look as clean as possible because now we are going to bind our raw edge. This is very similar to what we've already done. So our bag is looking lovely. Okay. So hopefully I have enough here. I do. All right. So let's grab our pressing mat. Open it up here. We're gonna take our binding and we're gonna unfold it. Okay. 
just like we've done before, except this time we're going to take one short raw edge and we are going to fold it about a half an inch to the wrong side. And we're going to press it really good. There we go. Okay. Now, bring our bag over here. Very pink. Now, we're going to take that folded edge that, and we're going to place it. You can place it here. You can place it here. You can place it on the other side. It's up to you where you start. So we're going to line up the long raw edge of the binding, the bias tape, to the long raw edge of our opening. And then we're going to clip in place. And we're going to go all the way around. Now, Depending on the fabric you use, the type of binding you use, you might have to do this slightly different and I will show you what I mean. I'm clipping this all the way around, okay? And that may make it difficult for you if you're using um, vinyl or something like that. I did make a video for how I handle it um, and I will link that here as well. Okay. So, Again, push that, the zipper out of the way. Give it a good clip. Now what I'm gonna do, gosh, I'm sorry if I'm not on camera. We've gone all the way around. I'm gonna overlap it here and I'm gonna clip it with that, with that original, where we started. So we're gonna overlap it about an inch or so, give or take. All right, so you can not overlap it so you can bring it back here. So you've got this like this, so that you start you start here, just on the one layer, so that if your bias tape happens to stretch long ways, you don't have any bubbles and this it corrects itself. Or you could start overlapped where they're immediately connected. That is up to you and what your fabric is. The only thing I'm gonna make sure you do is you push those debris down. You don't wanna accidentally sew over those. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine using a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew my bias tape to the top of my bag opening. Now, I do find that it is easier to sew from the inside rather than the outside. So I'm gonna sew from the inside. You may not be able to do a half inch seam allowance because of the zipper and what your zipper foot will allow you to do. So if your zipper allows you to do a quarter of an inch, then that's then you're doing a quarter of an inch. And that's okay. Because see, I'm not even getting a full half inch here. We could see that we've got it all attached. Now we're just going to flip it up. Okay, flip the whole thing up. Okay, so you see this is what we've got. You trim this here. Okay. Now you you could still see the creases, and we're going to go along with those creases. So we're going to fold it on the first crease, and then fold it on the second. When we fold it on the second, it's going to completely encase this raw edge. So that's the first fold. This is the second fold. And if I clip it in place, you can see that it totally covers all of that, um, the stitch lines there and the raw edges. So. First fold, second fold. It's gonna want to fold all on its own because you've given it memory, a memory crease, I guess is what you'd call that. And so you're just gonna fold it once and fold it twice. And clip it. Fold it once and then fold it twice. You clip it. Don't be afraid of binding. The more you do bi binding, the better you're gonna get at it. So there's no need to, um, to get nervous about it. So from, um, you could do it from the front if you like, 
Um, in fact, I probably would prefer that. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it wrong side out just because I like working from the inside. Okay, so I've got to turn the wrong side out. You do what's what works best for you. Everybody has their own little routine that they enjoy. Um, it's okay to have that. You're allowed to find what what works best for you. Um, Seems I came undone here. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to work from the inside. So the reason I do this is so I can make sure that my outer looks nice. No one's going to see the inside really, right? No one's going to see the lining side, but they are going to see the outside and I want it to be perfect. So we're going to start there. All right, here we are. Looks pretty nice. Let's turn it right side out. I'm gonna bring it back up through there, sorry. So it looks like this for now, and then we're gonna zip it, and then we're gonna tuck it back in, or we can tuck it from here. Um, this is why three quarters of an inch so that you can get it, get it down in there. You don't want it sticking out really. It just doesn't work that way. But you also, because of the way this opening is not very big, um, it just helps to have a little bit of extra kind of tucked away. Use whatever you need to, there we go, to get it in there. Okay, got it. That was harder than it should have been. Okay, so there's that. Look at that beautiful bag. And then we'll add our hardware or our strap. And I might change this strap to orange. I think it would make it, it would be a beautiful strap in orange. Isn't she a beauty? Gosh, I love it. And so here's what the inside looks like. Continue to push that out. You can give it a press if you think it needs it. Um, it's hard to see, but we'll show you some photos. There you go. And you've made your very own Allegro crossbody bag. Okay, we did it. We made our very own Allegro crossbody bag and I couldn't be more happy with mine. It is just beautiful and super fun, a unique style that you will just come back to again and again. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you next time.